Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another walkthrough service here on this Zebco Quantum Blue Runner Model 80, a three ball bearing a spinning reel. Uh, so this is a large uh, spinning reel made for, for surf fishing primarily. Uh, it's a high capacity reel. And, uh, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot to say about it. You know, it's, it's, it, obviously it's in good, clean condition. And I've already recently serviced this reel. I want to go through all the take apart steps, the cleaning and lube points and whatnot and the reassembly uh, in this video here. So, you know, we'll go step by step here. We'll start with taking our handle off here. Uh, but this reel, it, uh, it was a little dirty and, uh, you know, we're, we, we've already done all the, all the cleaning here obviously nice and shiny so the handle comes off real nicely here pretty simple we'll take our top cap off here but i did say zebco uh, quantum it actually does say both names here it says quantum right here on the spool and then it also says zebco uh, precision engineered right here and there's actually a, a year on here 1993 of uh, this reel uh, was was made so Make note, when you take the spool off, there's a spacer washer here that's more than likely going to be attached to this. When you take that off, you just don't want to lose that piece. Okay, and slap that back on on the shaft right there. Okay, so uh, we, we do have a top drag stack in here. We're going to save that for later. Okay, so we've got screws in these positions here there's actually five of them here and make note that this one is just a little bit different from the others okay but we're going to take all these out and we're going to have a look at the inside here once again this is a walkthrough service i've already serviced the reel so we're just going to go through all these steps here in this one video here i'm not going to divide it up into separate videos or anything like that we're going to get it all knocked out here in, in the one video but great uh, great size reel for for surf fishing for sure nice high capacity model i'd say this is probably the equivalent size to like a a pen 704 or something like that greeny or z series or possibly a mitchell 302 about the same size roughly i'd say Okay, so we'll take our last screw out here and just make note that this one is a little different compared to the others. It's a little shorter and it's a little smaller. Okay, now sometimes these can be difficult to take apart, these, these casings here. If you're finding that you're having trouble, you can always take a small razor blade knife to the inside just to split it open. Okay, so we've got... Some pieces here that we're going to take out. So we've got our first ball bearing here. Uh, now I found in this particular case, these original ball bearings are non-serviceable. Okay, so you can't take them apart. You can't get into them. Okay, and that's all right. You know, if if they're in good shape, you know, and, and you run your finger, you know, back and forth through there and it's nice and smooth, you don't really need to worry too much if, if they're grinding or if they're rusted or corroded really heavily then you might need to replace it okay but in this case uh, this reel is very clean i don't think it was used very much at all uh, you know it's got a little bit of you know markings down here you know like on the on the reel seat and whatnot but it's really not that bad okay now also make note there is a thin brass washer right here and you just want to make sure that you don't lose it okay while you're taking all this apart now we've got a set screw down here that we're going to take out like so so we pull our drive shaft out and we should be able to take the rest of these pieces and parts out here. Okay, so we've got another ball bearing here on our main gear shaft here on the other side. Just going to put all those pieces off to the side here. And then we've got our cross wind gear and block as well. Okay, 
And I'll put all those off to the side. Okay, then we're ready to take our rotor off, and we've got this cat, uh, this rotor nut here, as well as the set screw that needs to come out. Okay. And that nut is a 14 millimeter. Okay, so you just want to make note of that. You could do that with a 14 mil socket. You could also do it with a wrench if that's what you got. You can get in there with that. Okay. Make note there is this spring spacer washer here that rests on top, right? You just don't want to lose that, right? And you want to make note of orientation of all these parts here as you go, all right, so that you know, you know, what goes where. Okay. So you've got these two pieces here. You got a spacer. You got two screws here that have to come out. This is going to give us access to our pinion gear as well as the final ball bearing. Okay. And there it is. Okay. So what we do at this point is we have all of our pieces and parts laid out here. You want to clean up the housing really well. Okay. You can do that with the help of a few different cleaning agents, Purple Power, uh, Citrus Cleaner, uh, type stuff is perfect for this or just regular purple power simple green is good as well okay uh, you want to take some penetrating oil okay like this this liquid wrench wd-40 or whatever you want to clean off all these pieces and parts here okay all right not the drag stack but just all these small pieces and parts i like to put them in these parts trays of course anyone that's seen all my videos knows that i like having these these parts trays nearby okay and you want to get all these cleaned up Okay, you can use toothbrushes, Q-tips, uh, and then, you know, once you get everything nice and clean, you get all the old grease out of there, then, you know, you're, you're ready for reassembly, essentially, all right? I like to take a brass wire brush to these gear teeth and clean up all these gear teeth really nicely. Now, when it comes to lubing up our ball bearings that are non-serviceable, all you can really do is hit them with some penetrating oil, let that soak in and then you go back and you can just do like a light bead of some real oil like real X on top and it will seep down into the crevices of the of the metal housing in there uh, eventually okay and that's all you can do really you can't do more than that okay so we've cleaned all this up we're ready to put it all back in all right I'm not going to go through the extent of you know, re-lubing everything entirely, but I'm going to show you the steps. So there's our pin precision blue grease and got a brush here. And I just like to take that blue grease and then just kind of go over the gear teeth lightly here. All right. Once you have that all cleaned up, bearing goes back on top, of course. And then you're going to lay this back down in position. And we're just going to go back, and we're going to put all these pieces back in the reverse order that we took them off in. All right? I did hit these two holes with a little bit of Realex oil. It's perfect for that. It keeps the threads intact, and you don't have to worry about any rust or corrosion. And then when you go to take them out the next time, they should come out quite nicely. You know, reel maintenance is key with every reel, but I will say that with a reel such as this, uh, you know, of this size, you know, this is going to be exposed to the surf, okay? All the surf elements and everything that's associated with those elements, all right? So the salt water and, the, and just the spray, you know, getting into all the crevices of all these pieces and parts here, right? It's a very, very common thing, all right? So maintenance is key for sure. All right, so we'll put these pieces back in like so. Okay. Now, before we put our rotor back on, we're just going to do a quick inspection here. All right. I like to make sure that this lever gets cleaned out really well. Put a little bit of penetrating lube in there. 
all right, let that soak in and clean it up, as well as exercise the bale back and forth and spray a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on these seams here and let that soak into uh, the, the bale springs in there, okay? So you know that you got a good snap on there, all right? Also, do not forget to check your line roller, okay? You take that screw out and pull this apart gently, all right? And you can pull the line roller off clean up the shaft that it's on, and then just hit it with a bead of Realex oil, all right? If you want a little more detailed version of that, I've got a separate video you can check out on the YouTube channel just for that particular subject, okay? Now we're going to put this back on top. You have to get it lined up just right, like so, okay? And then we're ready to put our nut back on, 14 mil nut. This is not a reverse threaded nut, as it can be on some spinning reels. You don't need to over tighten this. There's no need for it, because you've got a, a two different positions here for the set screw. I'm going to put it back on this one here. Simple design, nothing too fancy, just, just nice and simple. And, you know, I really like three ball bearing reels for saltwater reels because they're not usually over-engineered, and they're usually quite smooth when they're in good shape. And it, it's, just, it's just having the basics, you know, the basics and the standards that you need, you know, for, you know, for any good fishing reel, really. You know, this kind of design and having the three ball bearings, the main bearing and the two on each side of the of the gear of the main gear here. And speaking of the main gear. So here it is. Clean off all the old grease. Take that uh, brass wire brush. Don't use a steel wire brush. Make sure it's brass. That way it won't scar the metal. OK, but you want to clean all that up really well. OK. Clean up your bearing, make sure that it's intact really well, okay, and then we just go back with that blue grease. You do not need to get every single tooth on here. The grease will work its way in, okay, and then you get a little bit on the shaft here on both sides as we get ready to put all this back together here, okay, and then we've also got our cross wine block. Again, clean it up really well, blue grease back in this slot here as well as our crosswind gear. You want it both on top and underneath and on the teeth here. Just get a little bit on here. I'm just doing this primarily for demonstration purposes. I've already done all this, obviously. Okay. So we're going to put that back down into position. Now, I do seem to recall, now that I'm here, you need to be careful doing this. This is kind of tricky to do at first, actually. And it's actually almost easier uh, to put the main gear uh, back into position before you put these two pieces back in. So we're actually going to do that right now. Slide this back in because there is enough space. If this was a smaller reel, this would be almost impossible. But this is, this is a nice big reel, and they give you plenty of real estate here to work in. So you can slide this back down into position like so. Okay, you want to make sure that this tab is in the downward position here so that the slot on your crosswind block will fit in there just fine. Okay, and then that way you still have access to this hole where your set screw is going to go. Okay, now we've got our uh, main drive shaft. What you want to do here is you want to take some 4 steel wool such as this. You want to clean this shaft up really well, okay? And then you're ready to apply a little bit of blue grease onto this shaft here, like so, okay? And then we slide that back down into position, nice and gently. We line up our, our crosswind block and our holes here, okay? Little bead of real X on that hole goes a long way. You can use any oil you want. 
Make sure it's it's made for fishing reels, though. I like Reel X a lot, especially because of the spout. I also use Pen Precision Oil as well. That's a good product, very affordable. But make sure it's made for fishing reels. And now I went and dropped that little screw in there. These are really small parts, and so you got to be careful. You don't want to go dropping them on the ground, and then you'll be searching around for them for the rest of the day. Okay. Snug that up real nice. Okay. And then we got our bearing that's going to go back. Do want to hit just a little bit of blue grease here on the shaft that the bearing rests on. Slide that back in position there. And then we'll put our top cap back on like so. Okay. We've got all these screws here ready to go back in. Okay. And what I like to do here is either hit these with a bead of oil or you could also simplify it and just use your, your penetrating oil here and just give them a light spray, just a light coating. Okay, and then that way it'll prevent any rust. Okay, smaller screw goes here. And we'll spin these back up. And before we know it, we'll have this reel ready to go on out and do some fishing, hopefully. But, you know, if you have this reel, or if you're thinking of picking up this reel somewhere, like at a, you know, a yard sale somewhere or something like that, you know, and, you know, th this video is, is basically to, to show you how you can work on the reel yourself. You know, so, you, you know, if you have it, then you know how to work on it and you can work on it. If you're thinking of picking it up, then you can make an educated decision as to whether or not you want to pick it up or if it's worth the money for that matter. I honestly do not know what this reel is worth. I think it's made pretty well for what it is. And, you know, saltwater tackle in general, it's expensive. I mean, you know, you're going to spend money on good quality tackle, uh, you know, for, for both salt and fresh water, you know, w whether it's, it's for big game fish or, you know, if it's for fly fishing or, or whatever, you know, if it's quality gear, you will pay for it. So, but in the end, you know, it, it can be worth it. Okay. So now we've got our spool. Okay. I just like to make sure I get a little bead of oil right here on that lever okay and then we've got a series of washers here nice big drag stack here okay and this is a teflon design style drag so these washers do not need to be serviced or oiled or anything like that they just need to be cleaned okay nice big teflon washers there okay and the metal washer goes back Teflon goes back, keyed that goes back. If you find you need to take some 4-0 steel wool to these metal washers to clean them up, if they got some rusted pitting stuff going on, you can certainly do that. Just make sure it's it's the 4-0 steel wool and not the heavier gauge stuff because it will scar the metal and you don't want that. Teflon, and then metal again, and put our ring back in. Okay, put our spool back on like so. There we go. I'm just going to check everything under here. You want to make sure that there's no sand or debris or anything of that sort that's holding anything up there. And then I just like to inspect the handle real quickly. Uh, do a little bit of oil here on this pivot point. And then just a little bit of blue grease here on the shaft. Slide that back in. 
A little bit of real oil on these threads here goes a long way, or you could also use the penetrating oil. Okay, I'm going to try it out. Anti-reverse is working well, so that's good. And we'll test out our drag. Drag's nice and smooth, as it should be. So make sure our bale is firing correctly. Yep, nice solid bale fire. So there you have it. That is the Quantum Zebco Blue Runner Model 80 three ball bearing reel, all serviced up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please make sure you do subscribe, hit the notification button, and that way you will be getting notifications as to when there are new videos coming out. And we will see you next time.